belongs to them. Mine must be one of the most argued over souls ever. I've been saved from the point of death, and I believe actually beyond death, by more than one person. A good deal more than one person. When I was a child, I used to play in a lot of dangerous places. I grew up on a farm, which is a giant place, playground. It's the Disneyland of danger. One of the most spectacular rides on this particular fairground is the Green Hopper Diving Ride. There's a, a gantry around the top of what is, in essence, a huge empty silo, half filled with grain, and grain dust, of course. The game is to get onto the gantry, jump from the gantry into the grain, and then wade or mock swim your way to the side. We've been doing this for a number of years, and it was getting so boring jumping in feet first. And one day, after watching some cliff diving on television on World Sport, I uh, thought I'd have a go at the cliff diving thing. I'd seen six and seven year old boys jumping off of cliffs in Hawaii, and I thought, well, if a Hawaiian can jump off a cliff, a Clanfield kid can jump off the side of the gantry. Pop. The most beautiful swallow dive in the history of Clanfield Silo, head first into the sand. Of course, once up to your knees, upside down in grain, you can't swim. I don't think I couldn't even close my mouth. A mouth full of grain. And I was waiting there to die. I thought I was on my way to death. Young though I was, I understood what death was at. This one hand, the giant calloused Neanderthal monkey man hand of my brother Gordon, pulled my one leg with me attached to it up out of the grain. Held me up like this. My face in front of what looked to me to be the upside down face of my Savior. Gordon Tyler, one. Number two person to save my life was Dawn Hansler. The Hansler sisters were older girls who lived in Canfield Village, which is a very small place, but somehow massively overrun by a tribe of dangerous children. They'd taken custodian status over all the children and would stick them on the charaban or the wheelbarrow or whatever and take them down the beach, play with the kids down the beach so that all the adults in Clanfield could do whatever it is that small village adult people do in the middle of the summer. I'm sure it's revolting. Anyhow, we're on the beach playing away. I've been given a Jaws football from the film Jaws. It was in the foyer of the cinema when I went to see it with my sister, much older sister with a boyfriend. I wanted to stay home and watch a six million dollar man and I was dragged out of my house at six years old to be frightened shit raw of a giant shark in a cinema, not allowed to look away from the screen because I was a little boy and little boys aren't frightened of fish. I was. Anyhow, on the beach, swimming, never even seen the sea before in my life, in the sea, swimming away, Dawn Hansler's there trying to protect us all. It's a hard job. But she decided she was going to teach me how to swim, and my swimming aid was this little football with a picture of Jaws's gaping six-year-old boy chewing mouth right in front of me, swimming along, having a terrible day, salty, sweaty hands. Away goes Jaws, straight down to the bottom of the sea, laying belly on the sand. The green what I assume to be hell, landscape around me, with legs, people's legs around me like trees. Not such a bad place really, hell, kind of a green underwater foresty sort of place. Oh, I kind of settled down there, wondering how long it'd be. Plop, down comes another single hand, the hand of Dawn Hansley, dragged me out of the sea, stuck me on the sand, tipped me onto my front, squashed the entire of the British Channel, but certainly the bit between Portsmouth and the Isle of Wight. Straight down the middle of the lines. Flipped me back over again, and there I was, laying on the sand, looking up at the again upside down face of my saviour, Dawn Hansley, too. It was at this point that I started to wonder whether this was going to be a theme. Is the face of your saviour? Always upside down? I like to think so. 